Get off my TV. The very hashtag that has slain a seven foot giant. The very hashtag that has sent a demon directly back to hell. And the very hashtag that has sent a beast into starvation. Now available as an official wrestling podcast partner of BarbershopWindow.com. Get off my TV. Off the script presents to you version three featuring the goon of goons. Get off my TV will now be the official hashtag that crumbles an entire empire. For $19.99, you can wear this beauty in pride. Barbershopwindow.com, link is down below in the description. An official partner for Off The Script. There are people right now who are working who don't want to work. There are people who hate their jobs, but they keep getting up to do it. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. Because in the graveyard, we will find inventions that we never, ever were exposed to. Ideas, dreams that never became reality. Hopes and aspirations that were never acted upon. The question is, what are you going to do with your time? What drives you? And greatness is a lot of small things done well. Day after day, workout after workout, obedience after obedience, day after day. When things don't work out for you, when things happen that you could not anticipate, what are the reasons that you can think of that can keep you strong? You will never, ever be successful until you turn your pain into greatness, until you allow your pain to push you from where you are to push you to where you need to be. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. Your pain is going to be a part of your prize, a part of your product. I I challenge you to push yourself. See, it's easy to be on the bottom. It doesn't take any effort to be a loser. I'm already on the fifth take for this episode of Off The Script. Five takes. Normally, I just turn on the fucking camera, I turn on the microphone, and I fucking go for 50 minutes. And I give you guys the best fucking podcast when it comes to WWE. It's 11 o'clock right now, and I want to try and be as respectful to my neighbors upstairs as I possibly can. But they got the TV blast, and so I'm assuming they're having a fantastic weekend. And I can record. So, that worry is squashed. But when I come on here, I want to be the JD you guys expect. But after the day that I had, I can't do the end this. I have no emotion. I have no desire, I have no feeling. I sit here, very direct, and I sit here, very, very aggravated. And I don't want that to show on screen, I want to be animated, I want to be colorful, I want to be, you know, JD. But today sucked, today was bullshit, and I'm not in the best of moods. 
And there's a lot of shit that's going on with me right now that I don't want to talk about here. That's really stressing me the fuck out. And I don't know what to do. And then you have those days, work-wise, where you want to fucking yell at a bitch. And say the things that are fucking just flowing through your mind. And you can't. Some old blue-haired hag came into the fucking store today. And you knew she was a bitch. You knew. You could tell. You could look at her and you can tell she was a fucking bitch. I don't know what her name was. She had a receipt. I don't fucking care. All she did was come to me and ask me why the product that she purchased is already damaged in six months. I'm like, ma'am, do you want to calm your fucking tone, please? Okay? I'm here to help you. Now, mind you, she didn't purchase this product at my fucking location. She did not. She purchased this in Connecticut somewhere. When her husband actually told me, yes, we purchased this in Connecticut, with someone who works for the company that I work for, and he admitted that he was only there for two days, that he was a rookie. I'm like, oh, okay. So the information that you were given was wrong, number one. Number two, he didn't properly give you the customer service that you expected. So now you're here to bitch at me. That's what I was thinking. Okay? Wrong place, wrong time. So she shows me the fucking product. And she fucking goes on and on. I don't believe it. It's, it was purchased in December. I'm like, okay, do you, do you fucking use the item? Do you wear the item? Do you do this with the item? Do you do that with the item? Blah, 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 blah. Running through all the fucking things that I got to fucking tell her. All the bullet points. She says yes to every one of them. So, I have to be a professional and tell her, okay, we'll take care of you the best I can. When all I want to say is, you fucked up your product, you fucking cunt. That's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. And yes, I'm not cutting this out. You're going to hear my fucking story. And you're going to hear the reason why I'm fucking pissed off. Because I have no one else to talk to. You're the only ones that I talk to. Whether this takes fucking five minutes or 15 minutes, I don't care. A release is good so that I can give you the proper show that you want. So we go to the back of the fucking store. And I have one of my co-workers look at this item. And she says, yes, they don't have a warranty. They didn't buy a warranty with this item. So we have to send it to the repair shop. So at this point, the old blue-haired fucking bitch... Okay? She comes to me and says, So what does that mean? Do I have to pay for it to be fixed? No. I'm gonna fucking go in the back and make you a new one. Please wait here for fucking four weeks while I mold it and fucking create it for you. Yes, you have to pay for it. You fucking idiot. So then... So then she says, Give me my item back and give me my box. Here you go. Here you go. Okay? She leaves the store. She walks to the fucking entrance. I'm like, good riddance. Goodbye. Okay? Then, the bell goes off, because there's a bell up front, and it goes off every time the door opens to, to let you know that someone's walking in. Okay? It's the old lady again. I'm like, oh my god. What the fuck does she want now? What does she want now? So she comes back, and she says, what is your name? This is what she tells me. What is your name? I'm like, and I swear to God to you, you know, normally you, you, you take a business card and you write your name and you give it to her. I simply ask, why? Why? And then she goes on and on. She's like, it doesn't matter why. I want your name. And meanwhile, you know, it, 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 it might sound different the way I'm talking to you guys, but I was absolutely professional to this lady. So then she says, it doesn't matter why 
I want your name. This set me off. This set me off. I, I, I go to grab a business card, okay, and I take a pen. And then I tell her, I want you to listen to me. She's trying to talk over me. I want you to listen to me, okay? I am here on Saturday night giving you all the proper information that you needed for this certain situation because you were uninformed or misinformed at another fucking location, okay? The least you can do is show me respect for giving you the proper information in a professional matter. Did I not do that? She says, no, you did not. Okay? Number two, I am here on Memorial Day weekend serving you, right? Serving you. Meanwhile, I could be with my fucking family barbecuing and having a grand old time. But no, I'm standing here in front of you. She was taken back. She didn't know what to say. She didn't know what to say. So all she says, she says, you know what? I want your name. And this is the last your company's going to see of me. I tell her, it's not going to bother me if you don't shop with the company anymore. You have a problem with the way the product is made. I didn't make it. I didn't make your fucking product. I'm not some goon overseas who's making your fucking product. I'm going to go home, drink a beer, go to sleep, and if you shop with the company again, I'm not going to fucking lose sleep over it. Then she walks away. I give her the fucking business card, and instead of writing my name, I put a fake name. Instead of putting JD, I put Michael. So when she calls the fucking store and says, Michael treated me like a piece of shit, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, there's no Michael here. Or if she wants to come visit me again, oh, that's Michael. I'm like, I don't know you. My name's not Michael. I'm JD. I'm JD, bitch. Michael doesn't work here. That's my fucking story. That's my fucking story. Then the old hag walks out, and she takes her fucking product, and I hope she fucking chokes on the motherfucker, and I hope she fucking slips, breaks her fucking ankle, and never fucking shops anywhere ever again, because people like that are fucking cancer. Fuck you. Done. That's my fucking story. I feel like Al Bundy. And I'm not cutting none of that out. Because I needed to let that go. Because I got no one to fucking talk to. Okay? So that's that. Now, what are we here for? Unders. It's the number one fucking podcast in your subscription boxes. Right here on YouTube.com. Off the script. 119... Part number three, May 29th, 2016. If you guys don't know, I'm going to run over it very quickly. Barbershop window for, um, for official merchandise of this very show. Twitter, at JD from NY206. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want more great WWE content. But you wouldn't know that if YouTube doesn't push my videos through the fucking subscription box. People subscribe to me. Oh, JD, I haven't seen your videos in three days, man. They're there. YouTube is doing this to me. That's all. That's all that is. So subscribe, and you know what? If you're on mobile, or if you're on fucking PC, or if you're on a home computer, laptop, if you're fucking wherever viewing me, there's a little bell next to the fucking name. Or go to the settings and turn on the fucking notifications so that you get my videos, Okay? So YouTube doesn't fuck everybody. Let's try and minimize that, okay? WrestleCrate.com and on Twitter at WrestleCrate. If you guys want the number one pro wrestling subscription service delivered to your front door. And as always, the iTunes podcast is live and is available. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Audio Boom, Podbean, and Google Play Music. There you go, okay? Now let's get into everything that we got today. If you missed any off the scripts this weekend, links are down below. If you missed any one of my videos this week, I got everything listed in the con uh, in the description down below. Okay, so make sure you guys go check that out. Now, I feel a little bit better. I feel a little bit better. I got a cup of coffee here. Try to stay awake. <sighs> fucking blue haired fucking cunt, man. Fuck you, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. Here we go. Undertaker. Undertaker is angry. No, JD is angry. 
The Undertaker apparently is angry with Vince McMahon over WrestleMania 32. Undertaker's WWE career likely over. Yeah, please. Please. And Jennifer Lopez is fucking flying in from finishing up her tour overseas and she's going to be knocking on my fucking door in about three hours. Oh, Mr. JD, I'm here for a fucking blowjob. Yeah, just as likely, right? According to Ringside News, Vince McMahon wants The Undertaker to appear at SummerSlam at the end of the summer. He did not work the event last year. In, oh, he did work the event. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm fucking so tired. I'm misreading my own notes. He did work the event last year in a match with Lesnar, but he's apparently not willing to work SummerSlam this year. At least, that's the impression. The Undertaker has not returned any of McMahon's phone calls regarding the situation. This led to more digging by insiders, and it appears that the Phenom is a bit upset with McMahon right now. He's reportedly telling those close to him that he is not willing to work another match after McMahon asked him to lose to Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 32. So Vince McMahon actually had the balls to tell The Undertaker that he wanted him to lose to Shane McMahon. Wow. Undertaker obviously refused to job to the boss's son, which resulted in the weird storyline result we got uh, at the end of WrestleMania 32 and continued to get on Monday Night Raw as to why Shane McMahon was still there. Due to the issue over the match, Undertaker is not interested in working on the match for the company. Fans have been hearing that the WrestleMania match in Dallas is Undertaker's last. However, most with the company felt that the Undertaker would want to work again after a bit of a after a bit of rest and some time away. Vince McMahon hoped this more than most. And although Undertaker is a professional, he did get upset with the ordeal at WrestleMania. Vince respected Undertaker enough to not have him lose to Shane after he decided against it. But the fact is that it got so heated likely means there is more to the story than just this. McMahon apparently is trying to smooth things over with The Undertaker, but The Undertaker isn't really allowing him to do so, as he allegedly is ignoring the chairman at this time. The former world champion has an interesting contract that requires him to work only one match a year, minimum, to get his downside guarantee. Okay, so he's guaranteed money, and all The Undertaker needs to do to get that downside guarantee is work one match a year. So he can say, fuck you, I'm not doing anything else, I'm, got, I'm getting what I'm, er, what I'm making, I'm getting what I'm fucking guaranteed, I don't need to do anything for you, if I don't want to do it, okay? Basically, his contract asks him to perform once, and he'll get paid for the rest of the year. Great to be the Undertaker, huh? I wish I could fucking do that. Go to work one day and get paid for the rest of the week, I'd fucking be in heaven. Regardless of what happens with McMahon, unless I see another blue-haired fucking cunt. Regardless of what happens with McMahon and The Undertaker for now, Taker will still get paid for the remainder of 2016 as he worked WrestleMania 32 and is not in any sort of breach of contract. Now, if Undertaker decides that he does not want to perform in 2017, the company would then have the right to freeze his deal similar to what they did with Rey Mysterio and Daniel Bryan before him. While it's almost obvious The Undertaker would not work for any other company if he decided he was done with the WWE, the company does not know this for sure. I mean, The Undertaker isn't going to fucking Ring of Honor, he's not going to TNA, he's not going to New Japan. I doubt that is the fucking reason. If I was The Undertaker, there's no reason for me to do that. That's a slap in the, fa that's a slap in the face to WWE, and WWE should not... Uh, you know, believe The Undertaker would do something like that. Have a little bit more faith in someone who's been there for fucking 25 years. Give me a break. All right, so they're worried about that. And if he doesn't perform, the company has the right to freeze his contract, okay? The company doesn't know if that he would actually go somewhere else, but he won't. That's why they would want to freeze the deal more than anything else. He would remain under contract, not getting paid much at all, and would have to work one match just to get his full pay. If The Undertaker decides to fully retire, he can remain under contract with the WWE even as his talent contract pushes him to wrestle uh, unless he has to retire for, retire for a medical reason. Regardless, he can be switched to another role within the business 
which would allow him to still work with the company in some capacity away from the ring. He would then serve out his contract in that way, so he didn't have to perform. What is so glaring here is that it seems pretty petty for The Undertaker to be upset with Vince McMahon simply because he asked him to lose to Shane. Undertaker has been open in the past to be doing business with the WWE as long as Vince asked him. Okay? As long as Vince asked him if, you know, it was alright, if he took, a, took an L here, uh, it, it would show some type of respect and, you know, Vince not just making decisions willingly for The Undertaker. The Undertaker is the type of guy you're going to sit down and you're going to go over everything and if he doesn't like it, you're going to fucking do what the guy wants because he's the fucking Undertaker, right? Undertaker is the most respected man in all of pro wrestling, and he has always been open to doing what is asked of him. He even allowed the streak to end simply because Vince wanted it to die, okay? On top of that, Taker still got his wish with winning the match at WrestleMania. That said, there is clearly more to the story that WWE is not allowing to get out at the moment. The dead man is too professional to be mad over something so little. For now, we won't be seeing Undertaker work for the WWE. We all felt the next time he would be seen would be near WrestleMania 33. If he did return at all, um, even that could be in jeopardy if Vince McMahon and The Undertaker don't get on the same page. It should be an interesting uh, story to see what happens next. Undertaker, listen. Undertaker's going to remain out for the rest of the year. I don't think WWE needs him in any big role. They got more than enough talent to fucking fill every gap that is needed to be filled for the rest of the year. You got the brand split coming up. Undertaker's a special kind of talent. He should only be at WrestleMania anyway. And I do not think for a fucking second the Undertaker will miss WrestleMania. Okay, something will be worked out. You know something's going to be worked out for WrestleMania. But it's very interesting. The most glaring thing here is that Vince McMahon actually asked Undertaker to lose to Shane McMahon. You know, there definitely has to be something more to this story, why The Undertaker is so angry. It can't be over something like that, if Vince McMahon did indeed ask. You know, it's got to be something more than that. And if I, if I find anything, I'll definitely fill you guys in on what's going on. But uh, if Vince McMahon asked him, Certainly, that cannot be the only thing. That, that's showing at least some respect for The Undertaker. I don't think Vince McMahon would ever, ever, ever show The Undertaker any type of disrespect, okay? So something, something really, really bad must have happened. If The Undertaker is not returning phone calls, if he's telling everybody that he's done, he doesn't want anything to do with fucking WWE right now, something else happened, and I just don't know what it could be. But he's getting paid. Undertaker is getting paid. It's not over money. It's not anything, you know, contract-wise. Undertaker's got a sweet deal. He wrestles one match a year. He's get, he gets paid for the whole fucking year of 2016. You know? Uh, he worked WrestleMania 32. He's not breaching his contract. If he does not perform in 2017, I don't think the Undertaker's going to allow WWE to freeze his contract. You don't want them to do that, and I don't think the Undertaker wants it to get to that point. So if WWE needs him, he will be back in wrestling shape for WrestleMania 33. Okay? So we'll see what happens with that. But The Undertaker right now, angry with Vince McMahon over WrestleMania 32. His career is not over, and uh, he'll be back. That's just my opinion on that. Undertaker will be back in the WWE very, very soon, okay? Soon meaning WrestleMania 33. It's not going to be SummerSlam, but he'll be back before WrestleMania 33. Something interesting as far as the brand split. Everybody's asking, JD, what's going on with the brand split? Any more news? You got anything on the announcers? Are the announcers going to be in this draft? I can only hope. But we do have an answer, and we do have some concrete information as far as the announced teams go as the draft goes. There are a lot of questions surrounding the brand split. In fact, the more you think about what's going on and what it's taking to organize this entire thing, the more questions everyone has. For example, the announced team pairings wouldn't even occur to a lot of fans. They occurred to me because we all know Michael Cole, JBL, and Byron Saxton fucking blow. So we know, and we want them gone. Make Raw great again. All right? Something definitely needs to be worked out. It seems that WWE has already taken care of that for us. According to sources, the company is planning on having double announced teams during pay-per-view events. That means unless there are some changes, Michael Cole, JBL, and Byron Saxton will continue to be on the broadcast team for Raw and all Raw 
pay-per-view matches. On SmackDown, Mauro Ranallo will remain the voice of that brand, with Jerry Lola remaining in the heel role in the booth, while Saxton plays the third man for both shows. Of course, this could be the perfect opportunity for the company to make some major changes to the announced teams. There is nothing confirmed as of now, but there is a rumor as far as Corey Graves is concerned. Graves posted the following on his Twitter page, and I quote, One of these days, Morrow, you'll realize that I am a genius. How does Tuesday sound? Wow. I would love that, man, and we're fucking thirsty for Graves and Ronaldo, Moro Ronaldo on fucking SmackDown, man. That would be fucking great. But the way things are looking right now, according to sources, Monday Night Raw is still going to be unlistenable with Michael Cole, JBL, and Byron Saxton, and they will call the Raw pay-per-view matches every time there's a pay-per-view. SmackDown obviously is going to have Moro, Jerry Lawler, and Byron Saxton, and then when SmackDown has pay-per-view matches... We're legit going to hear Mauro Ronaldo on pay-per-view, man. Listen, if that is the fucking baby steps that we need to take, I am okay with it. But, I'm telling you right now, if, me, if Joe and I do this mock draft, if Joe and I do this mock draft, okay, my first pick is Mauro Ronaldo. Seriously. And if I don't get Mauro Ronaldo as a first pick, I'm going with Corey Graves. Because that, ha that is the importance of a voice. You need a voice to tell the story in the ring. You need a voice to get the talent over. You need a voice to make everything seem like it's can't miss. And that's what Mauro Ronaldo does. Corey Graves reminds me of a modern-day Jesse Ventura. A modern-day Bobby the Brain Heenan. Nobody will ever be those two guys ever again. Nobody. Okay, but Corey Graves, if there's two guys that you could compare him to... Modern day 2016, it would be those guys. He does a, an absolutely fantastic job and probably is the best color commentator in the business right now. He's come a long, long way, and he's an absolute fucking joy to listen to. But if this is the baby steps to get everybody to listen tomorrow and get everybody used tomorrow, that is going to be fantastic. To hear him on pay-per-view is going to be out of this world, man. And I hope that is the baby steps that WWE does take. But if I was doing this brand split, everybody should be drafted. And Mauro Ronaldo and the announcers and everybody else should be switching places, man. It'll make things fresh. And that would certainly really be a new era. And Mauro Ronaldo should be on Monday Night Raw, no question. Michael Cole, JB on Byron Saxon, you can do SmackDown. I would, I would be okay for that, but I want... The, the, the A team needs to be on Monday Night Raw. What you got right there with Michael Cole, JB on Byron Saxton, that is not an A team, man. Nowhere close. So, like I said, baby steps, we can only hope. It's going to be great to see Mauro Ronaldo on pay per view. Vince McMahon wants Adam Cole for NXT. This was in the news today, actually. A few weeks ago, Adam Cole did an interview with Between the Ropes. Shortly after joining the Bullet Club, but he also discussed the possibility of joining WWE. This is what Cole had to say about joining WWE in the future. This is definitely the most talked about that I've been. It's the hottest I've ever been. And in order to make this run as good as humanly possible, I need to focus on what's right in front of me. And focus on making this the best that I can. Of course, never say never. Of course he's going to say that. That is a politically correct answer. He's going to do what he's got to do. He's going to make himself better with the situation that he's in now so that his worth and his appeal is greater when WWE snatches him up, which is going to happen. Okay, Roderick Strong, Adam Cole, fucking Jay Lethal. I'm telling you right now, Moose, I'm hearing Moose's contract is up. They're all coming to NXT, bro. Every fucking one of them is coming to NXT sooner or later. I know Jay Lethal probably signed for another two years. That's okay. That's okay. Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Moose, they're all coming. They're all coming. And I, I hope WWE is really willing to open up their paychecks, their, their fucking checkbook, and sign these guys to make NXT great again. Because I, right now, out of everything that I'm concerned about, obviously it's raw with the draft, but, you know, stripping NXT, and we talked about this all week, stripping NXT dry of Balor, Nakamura, Joe... 
the, uh, the you know the fucking revival, American Alpha, Bailey. Who's going to be left down there? So WWE certainly is going to need to look hard and long about what they're going to do with NXT. Adam Cole is definitely on their radar, no question. I didn't need to even read this article to you to let you know that Vince McMahon wants Adam Cole. And it's Vince McMahon who wants Adam Cole. It's not Triple H. It's Vince McMahon being reported wanting Adam Cole. According to a recent report from DWN, Daily Wrestling News, Vince McMahon is aware of a lot of outside talent, and Adam Cole is at the top of the list. It's being said that before Cole even joined the Bullet Club and took on more work with New Japan Pro Wrestling, that McMahon had his eye on him to make him a big star in NXT. As of this writing, it is believed that my, um, I was going to say Michael Cole, Jesus fucking Christ, that Adam Cole is signed with Ring of Honor through the end of 2016, so who knows what could happen in early 2017. I tell you, I tell you right now what's going to happen. Adam Cole is coming to the WWE. Look forward to that. Exciting news. It's going to be great, man. You know, we, we had, we were spoiled. As fans with NXT, man. We were absolutely spoiled with every fucking thing they did in the last two years. Everything. Now, they're going to appear more like a minor league. A, more like a developmental fucking, you know, brand. But that's okay, man. That, that really is okay. I'm just worried that if you're going to pull everybody out at the same time, what are you going to be left with? What kind of shows are you going to put on? How is the fans, how is the audience, the rabid crowds going to take to this, man? It's going to be great for the fucking main roster. But you don't want to kill everything that you've created with NXT. Because NXT is so fucking hot. So hot. Even now, man. They haven't lost any of that momentum. So, it's going to be interesting to see. But it's also going to issue in change. And since we all love NXT, we're all going to be intrigued and invested in how they handle this, this new era. What are they going to do to make it great and keep it great? So the intrigue is there. The interest is going to be there. I'm just worried, like I said, if you're going to pull everybody at all at the same time, what it's going to do to everybody's mentality, everybody's thought process, and what you're going to do to the brand. That's what I'm worried about. But Adam Cole, no question, coming to NXT. With TNA, you fucking goons coming at me, TNA fucking blows, okay? Fuck TNA, all right? They can't even pay their fucking workers on time. Two months plus. People aren't paid there, but that's a company you want to support, right? Fuck them. I don't give a shit about TNA. Mike Bennett, EC3, and yes, he won't be EC3 in WWE. Maybe he will. Who the fuck knows? Anybody can be named Ethan Carter, okay? Carter is not strictly because of Dixie Carter. He can come in as Ethan Carter, you know? Or WWE can give him a new fucking persona. Who gives a shit, you know? Leave that shit behind. Related to Dixie Carter. Get the fuck out of here, man. EC3, Drew Galloway. They're all coming to TN. They're all coming to NXT from TNA. No question. No question. You think those guys want to be in TNA? Fuck out of here, man. Drew, who's the world champion over there? Drew Galloway's the world champion? Nobody even knew he was the world champion unless he showed up in Evolve with the TNA title, right? Showing up there and cutting a promo on WWE. Instead of fighting somebody and defending his title and being put in a major program with TNA, nobody's talking about what he's doing, right? Who, who's his next... Who, who, how many times can he fight Bobby Lashley? Who gives a shit? Honestly, who gives a flying fuck about Bobby Lashley versus Drew Galloway? He was in Evolve for that one moment, cutting a promo on WWE, okayed it by Triple H, right? Because... That is their way in to NXT. Once TNA goes under, once they fucking fail to get another television contract, once they fucking realize that Dixie Carter doesn't want to give up majority share of the company and they go under and they go fucking bankrupt and they're no longer out there, Bennett, EC3, fucking Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, Drew Galloway, they're all coming to NXT. Every fucking one of them is coming to NXT. The rest of them... I don't know. Go find work somewhere else. But fuck TNA, man. They're done. Vince McMahon and WWE, they're eyeing TNA like a fucking bunch of hawks. Soon as they see the fucking ship go down and you can't see it anymore and it fucking disappears into the ocean, TNA is dead and WWE is going to be the vultures fucking just coming in, swooping up all the remains. That's all that's going to happen. It's all that's going to happen. So fuck TNA. 
Vince McMahon is going to rape, pillage, and burn everything that TNA is. Fuck them. Okay? Can't even pay their fucking employees on time. But people want to tell me, oh, JD is a WWE mark. He's not watching TNA. Meanwhile, WWE is putting on shitty television. TNA is putting on better television than WWE. I don't give a shit. Who gives a shit? Seriously? TNA is fucking Bush League. WWE can put on the worst fucking program of all time. I would rather much watch Sami Zayn do what he does than watch fucking Matt Hardy fucking uh, pretend he's a lunatic just rolling out of the asylum. Give me a fucking break, man. Absolutely pathetic is TNA. New Day will be feuding with the social outcasts for, uh, with, uh, for money in the bank. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. This is the last story for uh, Off the Script this week. Part 4 on Monday. So we got the New Day feuding with the social outcasts for money in the bank. The New Day seem to be dominating WWE's tag team division over the last year, which uh, has also given the company the ability to rebuild the division around them, and it's now deeper uh, than it has been in quite some time. The truth is that the brand split needs to be addressed, and the tag team division needs to be addressed for the draft because they could be exclusive to one show or they could be on both shows. I think going back and forth between both shows would be best for the tag team division. Because it's more talent, it's more roster space, it's, you know, I don't want to tune into SmackDown to simply see tag team wrestling. I want to see legit teams on both brands. Whether it's a fucking, just a regular tag team match, highly competitive match, whether it's a tag team title match, I want to see tag teams on both shows. And you have enough teams, especially with the rumors of American Alpha being called up, especially news about, you know, uh, the Revival possibly being called up, you know, I want to see tag team wrestling on both shows. That doesn't include a fucking six-man tag, an eight-man tag, a ten-man tag. Fuck that. You can't be doing that anymore, bro. Not with split rosters. Not with split rosters. I want to see two teams go at it, two legit teams, and I want to see highly competitive contests. That means something. That means something. That's all I care about. So everything needs to be addressed. For now, it seems like WWE is going to keep things simple. Monday Night Raw this week, the new day. Played a gag with a birthday cake that ended up all over Heath Slater's face. Seems like the cake gag is going to lead to a full feud between the two stables. According to a report from Cage Side Seats, the feud for the WWE Tag Team Championship will be the New Day defending those titles against the Social Outcast. Whatever they did for, for a tag team title match, <laughs> it beats me, man. You got me beat there, man. I'm stumped. I don't know. All because you got a cake thrown in your face. Okay. Tag team title shot. Shit. Sucks to be the Ascension, huh? All they needed was a fucking cake in the face, and maybe they would have got a tag team title shot. While it's unlikely that Slater, Bo Dallas, and Curtis Axel will win the titles, it's going to be a simple and fun feud that will get both teams through money in the bank. It goes without saying, but the current plan seems to be WWE priming uh, Enzo and Cass for SummerSlam to face and potentially take the titles off the new day, which I see you know, being the most logical thing to happen here. Okay, Enzo and Cass, you know, versus the New Day is an absolute money match. In Brooklyn, it's going to be one match that's going to blow the roof off the fucking place in, at the Barclays Center. And one thing I am concerned about, because I can see Vince McMahon doing this, splitting tag teams up via the draft, him and his fucking hard-on for Big Cass. I, I, wouldn't, I would not be surprised if fucking WWE fucking drafts Big Cass to Raw and fucking puts Enzo on SmackDown. Give me a fucking break, man. No teams at all need to be split up with a draft. If you're going to draft, you draft the team. That's it. Fuck this splitting teams. None of this Matt Hardy goes to Raw and Jeff Hardy goes to SmackDown bullshit. Fuck that. Fuck that noise. All right? If you're going to draft, you draft the team. You draft the Dudleys. You just don't draft Bully Ray or Bubba Ray, okay? And if they do that, maybe he will go to Bully Ray. But where does that leave Devon? Devon's not a singles wrestler. Neither is Big Cass. Not yet, anyway. You take the fucking team. But Enzo and Cass, SummerSlam, New Day, it's gonna happen. This is something that we have to fucking pretty much drink NyQuil for to get through because it's gonna be awful. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody believes in the social outcasts. Nobody believes they will take the titles. Nobody believes anything about them getting a tag team title shot. So, a fun feud? No, it's simply gonna be a waste of time. So that's that. That's the news, guys. I got more news, part four. You don't want to go anywhere. News on Brock Lesnar. What brand is Brock Lesnar going to be on with this draft coming up? Okay, 
What brand? Kevin Owens, favorite to win Money in the Bank. We'll talk about that on Monday. Vince McMahon, not hiring Kurt Angle. And a women's ladder match. Will that take place at Money in the Bank? All this, plus possibly more news on part four. Don't typically like doing part four, but I think this one went long enough, man. And I'm fucking tired. It's almost 12 o'clock. I got a double on Sunday. So I got to get some sleep. I was going to stream Call of Duty on Sunday, but you can fucking blame everything that happened tonight on that. So um, we'll see what happens with Sunday. I might stream some WWE uh, Universe mode on Sunday night. We'll see what happens with that. But thank you guys so much for listening to my fucking story. Sorry that I'm stressed out. Sorry that I am not myself, but hopefully I gave you an entertaining podcast today for part three of Off the Script, episode 119. If you missed anything this week, links are down below in the description. Get your fucking t-shirts, Roman Reigns, version three, get off my TV, barbershopwindow.com. Link for my online shop is linked down below in the description. Make sure to go check that out. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the channel, go listen to the podcast on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Audio Boom, and Google Play, man. All the links will be linked down in the description below. And until Monday morning, we'll do Off the Script on Monday, and then we'll close Monday night with a Monday Night Raw review, as always. I'm JD. Hit that thumbs up. Hopefully, YouTube publishes my fucking videos Sunday. If not, please do your best to reach out and try to find Off the Script on my channel. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys on Monday. Until then, take care, and I will talk to you all soon, man. Be safe. Pop open a cold one for me, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.